All right, so in this video, we're going to look at parametric surfaces. Now, we've already looked at um, parametric, um, parametric representations of uh, curves um, earlier, uh, which is the vector function, if you remember, a while back when we looked at this. And it was r of t, if you remember. So we had r of t as a vector function. And, and r of t was x of t, um, uh, the vector was x of t, y of t, and z of t, okay. Um, you, now, what this represents, of course, any kind of a curve, and we've done a lot of work with these uh, so far. Now we want to extend this idea to say, what if we looked at a vector function that was in fact a function of two uh, parameters instead of the parameter t here? What if we had two parameters u and v? Well, obviously, the extension of the next dimension that comes. From the, from the line, the obvious one would be a surface. So uh, this, uh, in this video, we're going to look at how we can use, in fact, two parameters to represent um, a surface. And of course, as I'm sure you're, you might already be thinking, what we're really talking about is this representation, in fact. So what you have is, so what we have is this, which is um, just like uh, the previous one, as you saw here, we had one parameter, and therefore x, y, and z were all functions of that parameter. Now you've got two parameters, u and v, u and v, and you have function x of uv, the y component is a function of uv, and the z component is also a function of uv. Now this would represent a surface, and these are this is called a parametric surface, in fact. Uh, so let's look at some examples of how we would first, let's start first by uh, reverse parametrization, so already a parametrized surface, for instance, as an example. So here's an example. This is a parametric surface 2 cos u v and 2 sine u. Now, the best, the, 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 as we used to do before, you have to think the same way. So your x component is 2 cosine u. So we want to understand what surface is represented by this. And of course, the y component is v and the z component is 2 sine u. Now, we already know from our uh, previous knowledge of parametrization and of course polar coordinates we've done so much so far that we know there is a connection here and that is that x squared plus z squared okay is going to be 4 cosine squared u plus 4 sine squared u and that's going to become just 4 because sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So in other words what we have is x squared plus z squared equals 4. Now that's a circle in the xy in the xz plane. And if the and here we've nothing. I mean, it's set free. V is remember independent of u. They are independent of each other. Two different parameters, which means V is set free. So what what that essentially will boil down to is something we all are quite familiar with. So in the x z plane, you've got a circle like this, okay, and in the y, along the y, you've got it all open. What does that look like? A cylinder. So that's a cylinder. So therefore. Now, you see, by looking at this um, uh, vector function, which is a function of two parameters, we are able to, in fact, um, uh, see the surface. Now, of course, the surface here is the cylindrical surface that we're talking about, the sur surface of the cylinder. Okay, so let's look at this a second example, and let's work the opposite way this time. So this time, what we want to do is, we know this is a sphere, and its radius is n, of course. So what we want to do is we want to find a parametric representation of this. Now here's, um, we already know quite a lot about uh, spheres. We know, for instance, the spherical coordinates. Uh, but let's, uh, let's do the following. If you remember, that in the spherical coordinates, um, we have rho as the radius. So we let rho equal n. And in that case, what happens is this becomes n uh, sine phi uh, cos theta and y is n sine phi sine theta and z is n cos phi. Now you remember that's the same thing except we had rho here. These are all n's are all supposed to be rho but I've substituted it with this. So what's happened is rho is no longer rho is not a parameter. Rho is now fixed at n. So what you see here are two parameters only phi and theta. So what's happening is what we're saying is that our function now phi theta okay can be written as in fact uh, its components are a sine n sine phi cos theta 
n sine phi sine theta and n cos phi. So here we've now got a parametrized surface, in fact. And of course, those who, are, who like the ijk notation can write that in ijk notation as well. Now you can have, for instance, now of course it's a sphere, so um, we would have limitations like we know already, which is that phi is between zero and pi, and theta is between zero and two pi. Okay, so now uh, by doing this, we've actually represented um, uh, the uh, sphere as a parametric surface. So we've parametrized it and brought it down to just the two parameters phi and theta. We want to represent this cylinder x squared plus y squared, second example, x squared, uh, third example, sorry, x squared plus y squared equals four, z between zero and one. So what we can do, what we can clearly see from this is the radius of the cylinder is two. So we can fix that uh, with r equals two. This implies that we have is essentially x could be, oh, x would be just two cosine theta and y would be two sine theta, all right? And z would be between zero and one. So we'll leave it as z uh, as it is. We won't change that, z equals z. So therefore, our function becomes that of theta z and it is in fact got the components as I have here. And of course here we know that theta is between zero and two pi, and z is between zero and one. And there's our parametrization of this uh, cylindrical surface. Right, so parametrization can also be done in another very simplistic way, very easy way in fact, which is as follows. So here, um, you can say let x be as it is, so your r uv is going to be as follows. So what you do is you let u be x, v is y, so then z is u cubed plus v cubed minus five, which means you end up with u, v, u cubed plus v cubed minus five. And that's a very, that's the easiest way to parametrize anything, uh, any surface in other words. So I just wanted to show you that quick example um, because you might think that it's always going to be uh, polar or spherical coordinates. That's not the case. Um, and that is the case when you have such a surface.